Hi, yes, everybody. And now I would like to introduce you to our speakers today. Uh, first of all, uh, lovely Melika, who is the MIL program coordinator in Salto PI. Uh, she will do the introduction to Salto participation and in, uh, information and uh, to the media information literacy uh, program and also to the participation resource pool. Uh, then we have Maria. Uh, Maria is uh, working with Estonian Police and Border Guard and she works as a web police. And she will introduce you to the topic of cyberbullying and uh, will bring you the examples and uh, will let, uh, tell you also about when to be consider cyberbullying as a criminal activity. Then we have with us Marianne. Hi. Um, Marianne is also working for Estonian Police and Border Guard and uh, she is working uh, uh, with, uh, media, uh, with media and she's also a presenter in a podcast. And then we have Mick. Mick, you can see Mick in Maria's computer and uh, he's a blogger and writer in issues related to youth. Also, uh, please uh, download a Kahoot app if you can because this way you will make the webinar more fun for yourself. I will share you the link in here in the chat and we'll come back to this later on. And uh, you don't need to register, just mark uh, that register later. This Kahoot will be open for two hours, so you can also do this later on. And now I would like to give word to Melika, who will do the introduction of the topic. Hi everyone, really nice to see you uh, here virtually. Uh, I am Melika, as Kadri introduced, also based in Estonia and the coordinator of Salto Participation and Information Resource Center. And really briefly, I'd like to share with you a short presentation, which we will later share. Uh, what is Salto P? This is the shorter name and what we are up to and uh, how and why are we re related. Uh, to media and information literacy and how does this connect with police work at all. So you'll find out uh, by the end of the webinar how everything is connected. But I will be now sharing you uh, my screen so that you can see my presentation. All right. Mm, seem to have a little bit of issue. Um, Kadri, do you need to do something with the settings so that I can share my screen? Maybe. Uh, you are a co-host. Uh, oh, okay, got it. Yeah, perfect. I think you should be able to see. Is everyone seeing the first slide? Awesome. So uh, Salto, research, uh, Salto Research Centers, what are they? It's seven different resource centers residing in different European countries uh, with different focuses of action or focus on some region, for instance, Euromed region, European Mediterranean region, Eastern Europe and Caucasus region, uh, Northern African region. So they are the competence centers that are focusing to promote and um, develop some topics or uh, work um, in or with, with some regions to support uh, accessibility for Erasmus Plus uh, and European Solidarity Corps programs, programs for youth, for youth workers, for educators, uh, making it possible to initiate your own uh, uh, activities, uh, making it possible for you to travel uh, and to learn from other organizations, uh, share best practices and so on and so forth. So this is a program coordinated by the European Commission and Salto Participation and Information, as the name indicates, is focusing on promoting youth participation. And of course, any meaningful participation requires you to be very well at home with finding information, evaluating information with critical thinking, and also uh, being able to promote, being able to reach out and being able to speak up. So th for that, uh, media and information literacy and critical skills are, critical thinking skills are a essential tool to foster youth participation and um, 
opportunities. But of course, uh, as a small Salto, uh, with three and a half people, basically, uh, we are not able to um, touch base with every young person in Europe and beyond. So we work mainly with organizations and mainly on a bird view level. So we develop strategies and programs uh, so that um, educators and multipliers can then take this knowledge and work with young people directly. So we don't know necessarily work that much with young people directly, but more with structure systems and organizations. Um, and of course, we're looking into innovations, into al alternative ways, into new ways of participation, digital participation. And we're also looking at what kind of communication outreach strategies work to get young people active, to get decision makers involving young people more, not just, you know, tokenistic ways of involving someone, but really sharing power. Um, and what are you doing with the media and information literacy? So um, most, of, uh, most of the activity started uh, last year or actively this year, uh, where we developed the media and information literacy training uh, program, which is uh, a series of events and tools and activities that help to promote critical thinking and media literacy. And it's also some of one of the focuses of the EU youth strategy, if you haven't heard. So we are... Uh, giving trainings, uh, we are organizing study visits, we are mapping gaps and challenges on media and information literacy, and we also hosted a really, really amazing event in uh, Tallinn, which was called Media Literacy Project Lab, and the aim was to come up with actual projects to um, help to promote uh, media and information literacy, and here you can see the group who uh, really will be initiating actions around Europe. And of course, this webinar is part of this media and information literacy program. Uh, it's called Cyberbullying, a software for a serious crime. And the previous one that we had was young people and youth workers in online communities, where we explored what kind of digital youth work works, what doesn't work, where should we be, where shouldn't we be, uh, what are the cases of radicalization and so forth. We're also promoting and preparing mini documentaries for, with project examples. And uh, the most biggest project that we are actually focusing on is the participation resource pool. And this is a website and a kind of like a hub of different uh, examples, tools and materials uh, about youth participation, about media information and critical thinking, and in future also promotional outreach so that we will become more visible with our projects. So here is just a little teasers for you. The site is not yet uh, online, but will be in the beginning of the year. So we will definitely let you know. But you can search for different topics, different mediums, videos, uh, webinars, uh, whatever, articles. And you can select uh, if you're interested in some countries or if you're interested in languages. Of course, topics, as I said, it can be fake news, it could be extortion, or it could be um, content creating, for instance, and it will be constantly growing and growing. So it will never be ready fully, but the first launch is the planned in uh, 2020. And uh, then gradually we will also um, um, gather and create more new materials. Um, but that's it. Uh, that's a really quick uh, overview of uh, what we're doing and how it's all connected to um, critical thinking and knowing what to do and how or where. So if you have any questions, maybe we can take them later or you can write me. Thank you. So hello, uh, my name is Mare Bonak. I'm a police officer. Uh, I have been a police officer for 16 years and uh, from those years, I was uh, six years a uh, youth police officer, so I know a lot about youth police work. And for six years, I was a uh, web constable, which means that I was a public police officer who gave advice to people. It was uh, meant as a project for children, so that you know, when somebody is cyberbullied, they always have a police officer in, in the internet, in Facebook, waiting for them uh, to help to fight. But um, it's hard not to help adults also, and you can't actually uh, 
uh, divide uh, people's questions. So uh, right now the web constable, web constables actually help everyone. So the basic, like I will mostly talk about the examples what I got when I was, was a new police officer or the web constable. So I have quite many of those because I used to be a police officer in 21 schools. And um, let's say when I was a web constable, then for one year, I got like 2,600 questions. So actually I know what kind of um, worries people, at least in Estonia, have. So I will uh, tell you as many um, stories as possible because I think that the stories can change the world. So if I tell you the um, uh, cyberbullying stories and uh, you can see maybe you have something similar in your country or uh, maybe you have uh, similar solutions or whatever, then uh, I hope it's gonna be useful for you. Uh, and yeah, uh, I have seen uh, all of the topics because when, when I worked as a web constable, then uh, people sent me all kind of questions. So as a police officer, I should be able to answer to, it was like 272 different laws, which I should know. Uh, and uh, so people had many questions. But today we will uh, talk only about cyber, uh, cyber things. And the title says cyberbullying is a soft word. And I mean uh, in that, that uh, whenever people tell me that, you know, I'm cyberbullied, but actually somebody sent a death threat to them, then, you know, it's, it's not a cyberbullying, it's a crime. So that's why I would like to make a really clear distinction that, that between the uh, cyberbullying, which is uh, not a crime, and the cyberbullying, which is a crime and should be uh, named after the name of the crime. Uh, but I will tell you all about it later. And uh, yeah, what else? Uh, when you have questions, you can um, uh, write them in the chat, and Kadri will help uh, to um, like sort them out, and we can uh, answer immediately if it's needed, or just later uh, in the end of the uh, presentation. And my presentation will be in two parts. So I will I will start with the soft part of maybe cyberbullying cases. Uh, then there will be a break, and then I will continue with the uh, crimes, which are uh, like the main thing what I had to deal with when uh, I worked as an internet police officer. Uh, so yes, I will. No. I will share. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is the first part. So I will start with uh, insults, blaming, toxic, exclusion, harassment. And I will try to tell you uh, some examples what, what I have seen and what uh, are important in, in uh, my opinion. So the first thing about the insults is that um, there is a myth, myth uh, about insults that uh, the children are the one who is insulting each other in, in social media. But actually it's a myth because uh, adults do it a lot more. So adults have a, a better vocabulary they also know uh, like the real things what hurt people. So for an example, uh, when a, an adult uh, sends uh, out some kind of insult to a woman, it's usually about how bad mother uh, she is to her children, something like that. So, so they really, the insults uh, what adults can make are really mean. Uh, so let's say when 10 years ago, it was more uh, to see uh, insults, which were basically, you know, you look like a potato uh, or uh, something like uh, this kind of simple. 
it was really common in, in the portal ask.fm, uh, maybe some of you know. So there were a lot of questions about, I don't know. So you, you, you can like, an, an, uh, have questions and answers, answers there, and mostly it was about insulting each other. Uh, but lately it has uh, gone bigger. So we have like memes, which are really insulting. We, we get a lot of memes about teachers. So they, um, I don't know, they have uh, uh, written like there's a picture of teacher and uh, written above uh, this picture that uh, what is the best job in the world and the answer is low job. Uh, so, so there are children who really want to hurt teachers. I don't know if it's uh, also common in, in your countries, but uh, in Estonia, you can go to court if somebody insults you. And, uh, and actually some of the teachers have done it. So uh, it's quite good that we get the practice that uh, we can show the children that it's not okay to behave like that. Um, and also when we compare adults and children, then uh, actually children have quite good um, di digital skills. So if somebody says insulting things to them, then it's easier for them to block them to delete the account or to leave the chat. But the thing what they are missing the most is actually the social skill to solve this uh, case. So when somebody is mean to you, then just leaving and going away is never a solution. And this is one thing what we have to practice. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so uh, insulting cases uh, have also been uh, in the media lately because we get a lot of things against our uh, president or government or uh, our uh, popular leaders and uh, so I think it's quite common in, in other countries also and what we can do about it I will tell you later because I will tell you let's say how to have social uh, skills olympics and how to teach children how to behave. But the one thing is what I always suggest is that we have to uh, we have to support people so that they will report insulting things and uh, so that their uh, platforms can clear uh, the, uh, the insults and mean things from the internet so it's going to be easier for everyone. So it's not only uh, the like, it's not a police case, but it's on our so all our responsibility we have to do it. So planning and trolling usually happens to uh, let's say YouTuber influencers or gamers. So they they insult each other, but in a really like mean way and using a lot of different ways. I have been speaking to uh, several gamers who do like they have like video competitions. Uh, in a bad way, so they uh, send out insults to videos. So how how bad uh, you play the games? Uh, I think once there was a story about uh, a boy who who did an insulting video, and I was called to the school. So I went to the school to speak to this uh, boy, and uh, I told him that you know uh, this was a mean video, and you have to take it down. And the only thing what he asked was how many views this video has. So for the youngster, it was important uh, how many views even this mean video had. So yeah, uh, in the end, he took it down and we talked a little bit more about the rules, but how you can behave or how you should behave in, in the internet. And after one hour of talk, and he actually asked for me that why are other people mean to him so we had to start over again and these kind of things happen quite often that uh, people uh, if they are bullied they try to bully back and they there will be a endless circle uh, talking and sh uh, sharing uh, different kind of data uh, it's all about cyber skills and cyber hygiene so uh, there are ways that uh, you can lose your private data and uh, people will share it to, in, uh, to make you feel uncomfortable. 
and uh, there are special ways how uh, people like talk about like uh, secret stuff about you or rumors and they want to make you feel uncomfortable. Uh, in most of the cases, the law is that you can turn to the court, uh, but uh, if it's like a really private information, let's say it's about your medical condition, uh, then there are some cases where it can be even a, a crime. And whenever this happens, again, it's all about social skills and how to uh, solve it. Because usually uh, these things happen between friends or uh, at least uh, the people know each other. And it's easier to solve these kind of cases offline than online. Uh, yes. About the I had sharing, uh, sharing data, it, it's always like, as I said, about hyper, uh, digital hygiene. So we have had cases where, you know, uh, children make uh, photos with their phones. Uh, there was a case, two girls made photos during the summer without the bras. They were 13 years old, so this is uh, illegal. In Estonia, it's uh, erotical material, and if you make it or or share it, you might end up in jail. But they had no plan to share it, but the phone broke down, and they brought it to boys who usually uh, like they repair the phones by using the YouTube videos. And after one hour, the boys sent out the first threat. You know, if if you don't pay us money, uh, like 120 euros, then we will share all those pictures and uh, your messages, what we found from this phone uh, to everyone, uh, especially in your school, school's Facebook. Uh, it was lucky that the children were quite smart. They wrote to me as soon as possible. Uh, it was pure luck that I was behind the computer and managed to send this uh, thing to the local station. So the police officers actually went one hour after I got, got this letter and uh, took the boy, boys to the police station. So it's, uh, we have to uh, teach children how to, uh, how to like, take care of their data and uh, also they have to know the limits what kind of pictures they, they can they can do or they cannot do and about like toxing it's all about social skills it's all about uh, you know, learning and seeing how others deal with those kind of things so it, it's youth workers responsibility sometimes even police officers responsibility to uh, talk about those things then, uh -huh. uh, exclu exclusion, uh, I have one sad story which almost ended up with a suicide uh, because there was a case where uh, a boy's picture was uh, cut out from the class, uh, class picture and a boy drawed an axe uh, in the head of this uh, boy's head and wrote down uh, that please kill yourself and we are talking about uh, it was a nine-year-old uh, boy so it was a second grader and uh, this kind of picture was posted in Facebook and uh, that meant that this boy ran away from the school because half of the class was liking this photo so they were saying that you know you you don't fit in our group and you it's not it's you're not suitable for us so the boy was lost for more than four hours uh, and the police was looking the school was looking my parents were looking uh, finally we found the boy uh, he was okay but uh, it scared uh, many of us because to see that kind of meanness when you are nine years old year old is kind of sad. So if we talk about uh, cyber skills or digital hygiene, then we have to start from the like really early ages. So they have their phones, they, they know how to use them and uh, it's our responsibility to make them 
uh, use them in a wi uh, wise and smart and uh, not hurtful way. Uh, I have seen exclusion uh, like cases where uh, also there are a group of youngsters who are having parties and sending those kind of uh, party videos or uh, just streaming online and saying uh, uh, to other people who are not in part of this party mean things like like again that you are you you don't you are not good enough to be in our party or you are not good enough to be in our class and it's kind of sad uh, and it it's even I have seen cases like that uh, with 16 and 17 year olds and it uh, still hurts them if there are people who just say that you're not good enough. And again, it's a school, parent, uh, parents, uh, police, youth workers, they all have to work together to solve those kind of cases because it, it, it never uh, solves in just one chat with the police or with just one chat with parents. So the exclusion uh, is really uh, hurtful. And uh, it was really um, stressful during the time when we had uh, uh, the popular time of Saraha app. I don't know if you know it, but the app uh, uh, had an opportunity that you can send out anonymous uh, letters to someone and they won't know who is behind it. So it would be nice if people would send out, you know, Maria, uh, I love you, Maria, you are such a beautiful person, Maria, you, I don't know, have a beautiful smile. But instead, uh, I got uh, complaints or letters from children who said that uh, they, they get really mean messages or they get just messages that please kill yourself, which is, uh, which is quite hard. Uh, again, to deal. So, so in those cases, because usually when I'm working as an internet police officer, I'm answering to people uh, through like chat or through messages. In those cases, I, I always went to the school to. So I was speaking to the children who got those kind of messages, and I also spoke to the class uh, mates who might have sent those kind of messages. But again, this app made it uh, quite um, made a lot of work to the youth workers and uh, police officers. And yes, um, luckily it's not that popular anymore. And for the last part, how many minutes I have? But yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, on nothing. So I will talk about harassment and cyber talk, uh, cyber uh, stalking. So uh, we, love you. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, the harassment uh, law in Estonia changed two years ago. Before, when somebody was uh, like sending you constantly messages, sending you out uh, uh, different. Uh, um, like um, insults or even like love letters. It doesn't matter if you have said to a person that you don't want to talk to him or her and they, they still continue, then uh, this is harassment. And it used to be a court case, but now if, uh, if it's really disturbing my life, uh, I can actually go to the police and the police will um, investigate it. And cyber talk and stalking is uh, completely like a crime because uh, no one, can stalk uh, people. So if you if you block someone and that the person will find another way in another platform to contact you, then it's uh, it's not okay. And this is also one topic that my friends uh, who made a really great Instagram page uh, actually um, will pick talk because they will tell you about harassment uh, letters, what uh, people are sending to them and uh, how women uh, yeah, feel quite uncomfortable. Uh, yes, so it used to be a civil case, but now it's a, it's a uh, police matter. 
So I have been talking a lot. Uh, these things were mostly uh, like the, the soft part of cyberbullying, which we usually can take care of in schools with parents, with youth workers, social workers. You can always call youth police officer with you and uh, have different kind of uh, things. Uh, how how we can teach children how to have better social skills. And afterwards, I will talk. Uh, I will tell you more about uh, the crimes that can happen during the cyberbullying. I will uh, give the floor or the computer uh, to my friends who will uh, tell you about the Instagram page, what they did and uh, what they found out. Thanks. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, I hope you can hear us well. So, where do we begin? Uh, our names, perhaps? Yeah, my name is uh, Marianne or Marianne in English, uh, however you prefer. And uh, my name is Mick. And uh, maybe you want to introduce the uh, account? Uh, yeah, so a couple of months ago, we created a page on Instagram called This Is Not Okay. And um, where did we get the idea from? From our friends and ourselves, pretty much. Uh, well, um, I found out about the uh, harassment aspect from um, female friends. Um, and um, as a uh, guy, it was uh, pretty surprising what sort of messages uh, uh, girls are getting, and uh, most of them were kind of uh, harmless, it seemed to me, but there was a part of them that uh, seemed potentially dangerous or um, harassing or just uh, disturbing, but they were not, uh, strictly speaking, uh, criminal cases. Um, they were borderline. Uh, disturbing, but you could al also see how these um, messages could cross the line and become uh, uh, the focus of uh, police attention. So I decided to collect uh, the most uh, disturbing um, messages and put them on a public uh, Instagram account so that uh, girls can uh, maybe uh, it and they can see that they are not alone in this and also for other uh, guys to um, see what sort of uh, communication is not okay. So I asked uh, Marianne to help me with this especially uh, because the topic is uh, pretty sensitive and I did not want to infringe on anyone's rights and uh, I did not want to uh, accidentally break the law so I needed uh, a professional uh, to help me with the account. Yeah well uh, by all means I'm not a professional in law but I am a professional in media and communications and I have a pretty good uh, overview of the Estonian um, defense law is it? And you have friends. And I have friends uh, like Maria, as you saw before. Um, so why I wanted to uh, go into the account with Mick was before, uh, because um, uh, me myself have, uh, have uh, received many very disgusting letters from uh, our lovely Estonian people uh, since I was a journalist before I started working with the police and I'm a podcaster. Uh, and since I talk about very um, different subjects from relationship, uh, relationships to sex to, uh, I don't know, gender binary uh, things, then people kind of took offense in uh, what I was talking about. And uh, I, I received pretty uh, nasty things myself. So when we started the page, what surprised me the most was the amount of letters we started receiving within a day or within hours. Um, uh, the account blew off very, very fast. I think we had a thousand followers within an hour or two. Yep, yep. Uh, and uh, by the fourth day, we had 10,000. 
So girls send, uh, send us um, the letters from their inboxes and we do kind of moderate or select the, um, uh, the letters we get. So we don't publish everything. We do have criterias and um, the criterias are that we have to know the context. Uh, it cannot be a conversation, uh, I don't know, between exes. Uh, it can't be a fight uh, between your boyfriend and you. So we, we don't use it as a revenge channel because that also can hurt uh, the other side of the story. And a lot of the times we get messages from uh, girls under the age of 14 uh, who have received uh, sexual uh, letters from adults, which is a criminal offense in Estonia. So if we do get those letters, um, we uh, forward them to the child protection services uh, in the police um, in Estonia. So uh, they, they can um, kind of uh, do the background checks and uh, see what's behind those letters, actually. Uh, another aspect I'd like to mention is um, uh, the, how do you like phrase this? Um, this is a, the, the one main criteria is that these are messages from uh, men to uh, females of any age, actually. But um, the problem begins when um, the uh, female person says that uh, she does not want to uh, communicate anymore. She does not uh, uh, wish to continue the conversation or whatever. And uh, the male uh, sender ignores her wishes. So basically, uh, we try to keep the focus on... Um, Unwanted uh, letters in your inbox. Yeah. Because uh, we consider your inbox online also your personal space, uh, which means that if you don't approach a person in a certain way on the street, why should you do that online? Uh, because uh, as Maria before said, digital hygiene is an issue in Estonia because uh, it's uh, it's kind of a new thing. More uh, more and more people of the older generation as well are learning to use the internet now, and um, they kind of um, feel like they they have this um, oblivious idea of anonymity on the internet, which is not actually uh, all the way correct. So. Uh, they sometimes uh, cross borders pretty easily. They don't have any filters. They um, kind of don't acknowledge what they say uh, online to other people, and that's an issue. Uh, another issue with these types of uh, messages is that uh, it involves uh, the stalking element. It uh, can uh, mostly be contained within uh, cyber stalking, which means creating uh, false accounts on different social media platforms uh, with the aim of continuing or forcing the interaction to continue when the other uh, person has said that uh, she has no interest in talking to yeah. the person anymore. But uh, that's the gray area where you can see the potential for uh, criminal activity, especially if the cyber stalking um, uh, starts to cross over into the uh, real physical world, which means that even if um, basically the victim has blocked uh, the messages from Instagram, Facebook, the accounts are blocked, uh, the person may start uh, stalking uh, the victim in real life yeah. or vice versa. Sometimes uh, there are people who have uh, seen a girl in... In a restaurant or somewhere working in a public yeah. space. Uh, they found out their name from maybe their name tag and then searched them up online later on and then um, kind of uh, started proposing sexual things uh, immediately, which is uh, a pretty big violation of someone's personal space and safety, I, I, I guess. Um, th that's the uh, main issue, I think, with the uh, male to female interaction, where the male person does not really understand 
what he is saying or doing because um, he's uh, unable to see it from uh, the woman's or the young girl's point of view. So there is yeah. a huge um, disconnect between the two people and uh, the males have a hard time understanding why a female is uh, disturbed or scared by his messages yeah. and uh, the communication issue is a huge deal not just in on the internet but i think in real life so um often uh, the people the males who are sending the messages they uh, don't really maybe intend to scare or uh, harm anyone but it uh, comes across as uh, scary. Yeah, and yeah. and explaining it to them is uh, maybe the hardest part of this uh, the uh, account that um, uh, they just they they are unable to see the point of view of the women, and uh, this creates a lot of uh, problems that may escalate into uh, a criminal proceeding in the future, perhaps. Yeah, and I think uh, why um, some men have a problem with understanding why they are coming across uh, maybe threatening or, um, or creepy, um, in the lack of a better word, is because people are, ha have kept saying over the years that no doesn't always mean no. But well, sometimes she says no a ten, a 10 times and the 11th time she says yes. Um, and, and we think uh, that's very tilted and uh, should be um, changed. Uh, that's the focus of the uh, Instagram account, especially uh, we try to uh, um, share screens where uh, the people interacting are mostly uh, strangers. Yeah. Uh, this means that uh, the guy has seen the girl somewhere on the internet or on the street and uh, starts uh, basically instantly asking for uh, sexual favors and once the uh, girl says no thank you the guy uh, continues uh, so that's the line uh, when it becomes a problem if you cross that uh, consent line then uh, we have an issue but um, because mostly these guys know how not to break the law how yeah they're kind of walking around the uh breaking the law border because uh, they are um, very often we see screenshots of uh, guys telling that oh i'm not going to threaten you directly because i know that that's a criminal offense um or uh, yeah they're walking on thin ice pretty much uh, the other tactic they use is mo mostly that um once they uh, have gotten the no response, they turn uh, nasty or mean. Like, yeah. um, for example, we had a screenshot where uh, the guy was like uh, saying to a girl that he hadn't met before, not even once, and never spoken to a word to her in real life. Um, and he started writing to her that, oh, she, uh, you're so pretty. I really like you. Do you want to, I don't know, hook up with me? Do you want to meet up? And um, when she said that, no, thank you, I have a boyfriend, I'm not interested, uh, he called her a slut and uh, threatened to, I don't know, uh, run her over with a car. Yeah, these uh, the threats become, um, they have two levels the, on the cyber level. Uh, I have seen a lot of things like uh, when the girl says, no, I'm not interested, the guy says, well, I'm going to release the naked uh, photos of you that you had yeah. on Snapchat. Uh, but uh, the guy, I don't know, it's a common tactic, but uh, they try to find all sorts of uh, blackmailing uh, information to hurt them. So it's basically once the guy hears the uh, response, no, it, the result is often like a child who can't uh, get a piece of candy and throws a tantrum. Yeah, tantrum starts calling her names and uh, threatens and basically um, the tactics they use 
to go very far. For example, once a girl uh, blocks the uh, person from Instagram, social media, whatever, uh, we've seen um, cases where uh, the guy has the girl's uh, bank account information. So, so he uh, starts kind of sending money to her and uses the comment section uh, to um, still pursue the messages he wanted to uh, to send her, like saying, uh, oh, you're a cunt, um, you're a worthless piece of shit, everything like that. So it's extremely disgusting. So, um, so oftentimes the advice that why don't you just block him, why don't you delete him, uh, it doesn't work because um, uh, the harassment can just transfer to different channels. And uh, the main reason uh, this account was created was uh, to try to explain to the public uh, which sort of behavior is uh, okay and which is not, because uh, we don't want to involve the police each time there's a nasty conversation. The best tactic on a citizen's, uh, private citizen's level may be to uh, raise public awareness yeah. and to say that uh, this sort of behavior is not okay. And if it happens, uh, then uh, the victim, uh, we try to inform the victims how uh, they can uh, turn to the uh, police and uh, what sort of uh, legal options they have to get rid of this uh, harassment. Uh, yeah, and I think uh, we've uh, kind of reached our goal in, uh, in the uh, terms of uh, uh, public awareness. We've brought out a problem to the uh, general public and uh, we've, we've received a lot of um, um, information from different people saying that they had no idea this was going on. They don't know anyone who does that, but yes, these people are amongst us and around us. Um, one uh, interesting piece of information I got was that when I talked to my uh, female friends, they said they know, well, every second or third female has gotten some sort of uh, messages like this. Yeah. But uh, when I asked uh, from my male friends, they said they don't know any guy who sends messages like this. Yeah. So uh, it's a, a source of shame. Uh, and it's kind of a tilted image in the uh, um, in the society as well, because um, as men say that they don't know anyone who does that, they might not know that it's their best friend because they just don't talk about it. And why should they? Because it's disgusting. Uh, so the best thing that can come out of this account can be uh, the fact that people uh, openly discuss it and they become more aware of this uh, pattern of behavior. So hopefully in the future, it will not uh, turn into a more serious crime and uh, raising public awareness uh, through uh, direct examples on that account. Uh, I think it can uh, help uh, people, but also um, even the police if, if certain types of behavior is uh, frowned upon, uh, we can basically prevent future possible crimes and uh, help uh, victims who are maybe thought they were alone and isolated and maybe we can help them to they feel like they're a part of a community. Uh, do we have any questions we have to answer yes. right now? Yes, I, yeah. will, I, will, I will tell you the question. So okay. the first one is uh, why you don't involve the conversation in text? So you, uh, you talked about it a little bit? Yeah, uh, that's because um, many of the times we do not have the context. We do not know what has been said before in the conversation. What are the relations between the people uh, beforehand? And um, what we are putting a lot of effort on is that this will not turn into a revenge account because uh, we received um, uh, some um, letters from guys saying that uh, this screenshot has been taken way out of context. We've seen uh, screenshots before uh, the ones sent to us, and we've even seen um, uh, kind of modified screenshots where women have taken out certain messages just to show them as victims, which is also not okay. Yeah, and it's, uh, I see some questions that, you know, it's, it's not, not like a 
book up letter which yeah. they send it, but the, usually it is more how it gets insulting. So if yeah. the girl says no to you, uh, then the boys will say really like nasty words, yeah. which is cyberbullying. They will exactly. uh, send you uh, pictures, uh, really nasty ones, and yeah. uh, etc. So so the first contact ends in cyber violence, which is not okay. Mm -hmm. And that's why I really like the idea that you have uh, with your account. Mm. Also, if uh, if there is a death threat involved with the uh, exes, of course, uh, that's a police matter. But we try to uh, keep it with a within the specific uh, parameters, so uh, we can keep the focus uh, basically on the interaction between maybe a stranger and uh, just a girl uh, having fun on the internet and. Uh, the harassment that can uh, come from that. Uh, what was the next question? The question was, uh, how do people trust your page? Uh, I think we build trust by uh, being very um, honest from the beginning, uh, with the exception of uh, the people behind the account. We assured uh, everyone that it's not a political uh, statement page. Uh, it's not uh, a governmental uh, campaign of some sort. It's just... Um, private people trying to do something uh, good for uh, uh, th else. There's also the uh, anonymity uh, factor. We don't uh, like to, uh, we always like the usernames, the yeah. user profile pictures so that no specific individual will be uh, kicked out and uh, shamed because that in turn can be regarded as cyber bullying actually. Yeah, we don't want to enhance cyber bullying uh, going forward after we post uh, yeah, that, that is actually the next question. Do you yeah. have uh, negative comments underneath? Those? Oh yeah, yeah, of course but, we do. Do um, you moderate them? Yes, we do. Uh, when people uh, become very uh, trolley-ish or they um, start leaving very offensive messages, we restrict them from the account. Um, yeah, that's basically what we do. Maybe one part is also like uh, people know that you, you are doing cooperation with the police. Yeah, so, yeah. So we announced that we are um, in cooperation with the police pretty early on. And uh, that kind of has um, uh, has been a good influence on our, uh, our audience as well. Uh, the other aspect is that um, on the, in the comments specifically, we do not uh, tolerate making fun of uh, the victims or the people who have gotten hurt because uh, victim blaming uh, can be a very, very bad thing in terms of uh, people coming forward with the cases. If uh, they are public, publicly being made fun of, it is uh, less likely they want to come forward with their story. Yeah. So anything related to uh, making fun of the uh, girl, we usually delete or restrict the account. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think it, it was all. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And yes. I will take over again. <laughs> so I also see some questions to me. So. First one was uh, how to encourage children to speak up and report bullying. Uh, I think the main uh, reason is that actually we do have the uh, trust from the people. So in Estonia, it's kind of um, uh, like a perfect world for the police because 93% uh, of people have said that they do trust Estonian police. So they they are actually cooperative. Of course, there are some people who, who never trust government uh, officials, etc. But um, I think we have proof that we are there for the people. Uh, we actually have a goal for the 2030. We want to be the world's best police. <laughs> so, uh, but in the in the in the uh, it, it will be it will look like so that you know we want to be there for every Estonian person and so that they wouldn't be afraid to report um, you know, bullying cases and uh, all, the, all the other serious crimes. So, so and also uh, web constables or internet police officers are like well-known people. I think last year I gave uh, interviews 
and my name was in the newspapers and TV and radio for more than 192 times. So it means we are quite like public figures. And sometimes people say that they don't even consider us as police officers, but somewhere in the middle. So, so we are there for give advice, uh, help them how to report, uh, help them uh, how to solve uh, cases without the police also. Because I, I see here is also a question that uh, sometimes the, case, uh, uh, the bullying can, like, it can be a, like a minor case. But it's still good if a child asks for help so we can actually guide the child to the right direction. We do have like child helpline where she or he can talk, uh, we can contact the school, we can uh, contact the uh, local um, social worker, youth worker, and we can uh, do something in the cooperation. Because our idea is that uh, when someone needs for help, we will find a way how to help even though if it's just uh, being there for them in the chat. Uh, what else? Uh -huh. So yeah, so we can encourage to ask for um, minor uh, issues also, because when it's important for that child, then it must be taken care of. Uh, about the dislike button. So uh, I know that Facebook has uh, talked about it a lot, but they say that they won't put dislike button in, in uh, Facebook. So I think it's a good idea because we must have the ability to say in our words what is um, what we don't like about this post. So if we can, uh, we can describe our feeling, feelings, then it's already a step forward. So uh, it's better than just having like this thumb up uh, down uh, button. Yes, uh, <laughs> so there is a question about uh, uh, today's teenagers and cyber harassment and uh, yes, they do are more likely to report those things to us and, and that's good. Yeah. Um, can you suggest where to find more information on cyberbullying for, for students? Uh, for students, uh, it, it depends. Uh, we have uh, special like internet safety pages mm -hmm. where you can go and Google. Uh, we have uh, we have the Google and you can Google it. <laughs> but uh, uh, usually, like uh, even for the universities, we have some links uh, which guide us to the uh, police page, and we will share the information, what kind of help you need. And we are building the participation resource pool, which is oh, yeah. directed to the uh, youth workers, multipliers, etc. Yeah, and there are uh, also uh, some other pages uh, which is covering all Europe for the youth work part. So, so they also uh, talk about uh, cyber uh, issues. And also, as a police officer, I have found a lot of uh, important uh, information from the Europol prevention pages. So and they have a special landing page for cyber uh, crimes. So look for that and you will find uh, quite many interesting uh, stories, video materials, and they are in different languages. So, so it's helpful for, for everyone. Yes. Uh, so I will, uh, I will continue with that part, which is for me, uh, yes, share. So I will uh, talk about those topics. Um, so the, the first ones are the most uh, difficult ones and they happen uh, a lot, uh, sadly. Uh, hate speech is one of the main topics right now in, in all over Europe, but also in, in Estonia because of political issues. Um, and we do get a lot of um, threats, uh, uh, which can be like hate speech and we have to, define them to the public uh, a lot. In Estonia, it's quite uh, hard because when we talk about hate speech, then there must be a real threat. And in many cases, it's not, it doesn't, uh, the threat, uh, like the hate speech doesn't include a real threat. So it's just a nasty talk. And that's why as police officers, we can only go knock on the door uh, and say that, you know, there is a line, you shouldn't speak like that. 
but we can't actually investigate those kind of um, uh, crimes that much. But sextortion, uh, I, I, I brought it out as a cyberbullying because this is uh, what actually happens when uh, when children are not the wise, uh, digitally wise in uh, in the internet. I have seen a case where uh, five creators, so they are like you know eleven, um, found uh, a pedophile account in Facebook. And of course, uh, children are interested in seeing what what's uh, what happens when when you talk to a pedophile, and they uh, make friends with that account and they talk a lot. And when that man, after two weeks, said that, okay, I will, uh, I would like to meet you. I will come to visit you. The girls uh, thought that, okay, if we just block this person. It will it will end this situation, but at that time that uh, Betafel had all, already downloaded all the materials what girls had in their Facebook, and uh, he did many like um, advertisements in in different pages, and said you know I'm a girl I want to have my first sex experience or I want to have a group bang, and added those uh, pictures from these young young girls. And uh, he was asking for them, like from them, that you know we have to meet. You promised, etc. So those kind of cases can turn really bad if uh, the children don't have anyone uh, whom they can ask for help. And in that case, also uh, they were too afraid to ask help from their parents because they thought that you know. My dad has always told me that we shouldn't talk to the strangers, but we were the ones who started it. We thought that this is like a funny case, but now we are in trouble. Uh, and also, I have seen uh, extortion case cases which in, um, are targeted uh, to gay uh, children. So, so there are again pedophiles or even just classmates who make fake accounts and uh, uh, get contact with uh, the boys. Usually, I have I haven't had any uh, cases with girls, and uh, they talk about sexual experiences and they bring the boys so far that they will uh, touch themselves or show themselves uh, naked in in the web camera, and after that, they will get like a uh, threat that you know um, you must pay me money, otherwise I'm gonna share these pictures or or, or chat uh, publicly. Or uh, in one case, uh, the boy got a letter from the pedophile that you know you you must come into my house. This is the address, and if you don't come, you know I will make it public. And uh, again, it was pure luck that this. Uh, 13-year-old uh, boy wrote to me and I was behind the computer because it was like a Friday evening and uh, I managed to send uh, police officers behind that boy's door because he um, he wasn't ready to talk about that case to the parents because he, he didn't want to discuss the gay topic with them and uh, it was really like hard for him, and when he saw the police uh, came, he actually escaped from the house and was chatting with me through through mobile phone uh, while he was hiding. So I, I tried to talk him into going to the poli uh, police officers and tell them what happened. And then it turned out well. We actually got the, the man who was chatting him, but it's quite sad that uh, uh, those kind of things happen. And they do happen because, as uh, Marianne and Mix told, uh, there are a lot of contacts of people try to make uh, through Instagram, to Snapchat, uh, through Facebook, and children want to try their limits, and they can turn into bad situations. Uh, so yeah, and also uh, sex torsion uh, involves a lot of like. Uh, Adults also. Right now in Estonia, we have again a new wave of blackmailings. So probably thousands of people got um, emails that you know I account I hacked your account uh, and uh, I have seen through web camera what 
kind of porn you watch and what you are doing during that uh, time. And if you don't pay us in bitcoins, then you know we will publish all these materials. And uh, this is this is this is not something new, but it comes and goes. So it's like waves. So so right now we are having like a really big wave of those kind of letters. When I used to work as a web constable more, then I actually got like uh, the um, calls from the emergency, like the 112. Uh, they con connected me to the people who were afraid that there might be those kind of uh, materials which will like be shameful. Um, I have been spoken to people, um, especially men, who say that uh, if their wife finds out that uh, he have been watching porn, then he's going to kill himself. So it's a really big issue, even though uh, it's it's a blackmailing letter. They don't have any any actual data. They haven't acted anything, but it's kind of you know, sad that it goes through and uh, a lot of lives are um, like disturbed. So I think today I have uh, written at least at least to six seven uh, persons about that. You know, this is this is not like real it's a blackmailing letter and it's not happening really so you can just delete and just i always re remind them that you know you have to um, change your passwords because then there is at least something that people can do and if they change it then they feel more relieved uh, i put physical violence here because uh, it's uh, it's not a cyberbullying but uh, I will explain what I mean with that. Uh, but the problem is that uh, we have had several cases where people want attention with uh, beating someone uh, and uh, streaming it online or uh, making videos of it. So you make a crime in real life and then you publish it to, uh, to, to make yourself more uh, visible to everyone with that stupid acts. And we have seen quite many of them. Sometimes even like, I remember a case where it just happened on the street. Uh, two boys attacked a random man and uh, they published themselves the video because they were proud that they did something really stupid. And after that, they actually got so many death threats that uh, I went to the TV and said, you know, please people, uh, we know the case, we got the boys, they will get punished for what they did, but please don't uh, uh, like sow those nasty uh, things and don't uh, threat those boys because it's not okay. And uh, in the end, actually, the boys could not live in that area anymore, so we had to uh, relocate them. It also happens sometimes with the cases where children have been violent against animals uh, so that uh, the internet will not forget. So if you have, okay, well, I have seen cases where children uh, throw kittens against the wall or they throw uh, small birds against the, the floor. So then they make movies and, uh, and uh, think it's okay. And uh, this will follow them till the end. So, so they can change schools, but the internet never forgets. So um, that's why it's important to tell them or teach them uh, the digital knowledge from the early stages on so that they don't uh, ruin your, uh, their lives. Uh, I, uh, no. Identity theft is quite common. Uh, identity theft, uh, I don't know it, uh, how it's in your uh, countries, but um, in Estonia, you must at least use uh, like two really certain uh, data, like name, picture, maybe the place where this person lives, to say that this this is an identity theft. So a fake account, uh, just when you make up a, a name and use someone else's photo, is not identity theft. And uh, identities are, are, are used, the wrong identities are used to bully someone because you want, don't want to say the words, nasty words yourself. 
or uh, to lure someone. So if you want to uh, gain trust, so it's easier to have a clear background or to do other crimes. And usually uh, they all happen in, in the in, in internet and are against the person who uh, they contact. Uh, I have had cases where somebody uh, reported me that um, his uh, horse's identity was sto uh, stolen. Uh, in Estonia, it's not possible because the horses don't have identities. Uh, but it's it's a good thing you can look from your uh, laws and see how it's in your laws. Anyways, this is one thing what you can do in Facebook. You can report fake accounts. Uh, when you see some fake accounts and you see that uh, uh, they are hurting someone, report. So the more reports uh, this uh, gets, the better. Uh, my, uh, my identity was stolen once by an, a Turkish uh, guy uh, because I wrote to him that, you know, please stop harassing this Estonian woman. It's against the law that you send uh, her uh, dick pics, pic pictures that uh, she's not asking and uh, etc. And uh, he got angry, made a fake account uh, with my name and whoever got friends with that account uh, got uh, pictures of human poop uh, under my name. So it was quite uh, disturbing, but I went to Facebook. I said to my friends that, you know, please let's try this reporting. And in less than nine minutes, the account was gone. So um, the social media, platforms actually do have uh, the ways how they can help you. Hacking uh, is uh, also one uh, way, uh, uh -huh, uh, one way uh, how uh, people can be bullied. So a lot of, a lot of cases, it means that uh, someone sends you a link that you click. Uh, I remember a lot of cases where uh, girls get links uh, and uh, it's written that, you know, this is a photo competition and your friend is uh, uh, competing, please give her a like. And girls always want to give likes. They click, they see that they have to log into Facebook again and they lose the accounts. And then the uh, threats start because the hacker will take over the account and will, will contact uh, the person on, and ask for money if, if it's, uh, one case or ask for uh, like naked pictures if this Facebook account already had some kind of pictures. So yeah, uh, and with boys, it usually happens so that they um, get messages that, you know, uh, there is some kind of disturbing video of you in, in Facebook or in YouTube, uh, please check it out. And Boys will click and will lose their accounts and will be a victims of uh, extortion or, or different crimes. So I also put here scamming because uh, in Estonia, the gamers think that it's okay. Uh, it's not. So if uh, scamming means that you, you steal something in the game uh, and uh, it's like a virtual death, but uh, we have... Uh, uh, I know that there are several cases where uh, people just attack certain people who don't know how to say uh, no, they don't have the social skills, or they are not that wise in the games, and they got, get robbed. But according to the Estonian law, we can actually uh, investigate those things if uh, the, uh, like the loss is more than 200 uh, euros. And for the last part, and for the past uh, last minutes, uh, I put here the suicide games, which means that uh, uh, there have been like the games like Blue Whale. There has been uh, also the game uh, Momo. I know that some people say that Momo wasn't real, but uh, tell that to our uh, boys and girls because uh, there were people in Estonia who did the Momo accounts and contact uh, our children and send uh, out threats, you know, like uh, uh, you will die in, in three minutes or if you leave the school, you will die and uh, that's not okay. So even though maybe it wasn't a thing in some countries, 
the Momo uh, got real uh, attention in Estonia. And also we had several other similar, like, like red owl or um, uh, golden butterfly, which all uh, meant the same things. And uh, so we have been talking about that a lot with parents, with schools, and sending out uh, different letters how to deal with uh, those kind of things. So it's not a thing anymore, but uh, I hope it won't be a thing in the future also. So uh, I have, yeah. Uh, on, yeah too. So. so there is uh, two questions. Uh, don't you think that thumbs down button in Facebook will create interpersonal problems because it won't be anonymous, not like YouTube? Yes, uh, no, I, I don't support the, the thumb down uh, button at all. So, mm -hmm. so it's, uh, that's why the Facebook uh, uh, has said no to, to that also. I have been meeting actually with Facebook a lot because uh, they, they, they help us in uh, several cases, like when a child is missing and we sometimes, then we also discuss all those policy questions like nipple uh, policies and all those uh, other things also. So all those kind of questions are also welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, and do Estonian schools have media education for children? I think this will help them be aware of digital security. Yeah, they are actually putting some uh, elements in the first graders also. But actually, I, I have been also in some kindergartens where where the phones are allowed. So it means that the child can have a phone in, in kinder kindergarten, which means that uh, she or he must have basic uh, rules. Uh, but I think it's still like the baby steps because we need to uh, do it more. We need to have uh, more topics especially when we talk about uh, porn, um, you, you cannot be like, uh, you cannot block children from uh, uh, Googling porn. And uh, this is one thing what we are um, not dealing with. We have had cases where like uh, nine-year-olds try to have sex. They watch uh, like sex from their uh, mobile device and try to simulate it. And that means that, you know, it's already late, so we have to talk about uh, those kind of things earlier because of the digi digital world and because everything is so accessible. Okay, thank you. Uh, oh, uh, so uh, I think uh, Kadri also uh, already put the Kahoot link uh, in yeah. the chat. Yeah, so. Um, now it's right time just to test it because I have been talking a lot. And uh, the sad thing with the webinars is that, you know, I can't see if you like it or not. And uh, the Kahoot is just to entertain you. So uh, it's every question has 20 seconds. You have to ask, answer quickly. Uh, the winner is not important, but it's just important for you to um, be on the topic and maybe have some uh, fun questions. So enter the Kahoot, uh, use the pin. If you haven't used it, then it's now it's the right time to learn it because uh, the, mm, as a you, you worker, uh, then it's a really useful uh, tool uh, to use when you deal with youngsters. Uh, just in case if somebody cannot see the chat, then the pin to Kahoot is four, nine, six, one zero four four hundred ninety six one hundred and four. So I can just uh, meanwhile uh, just uh, remind you that all those things which are actually on the board right now are uh, according to Estonian law and according to most of the European laws uh, crimes. Uh, except for the suicide uh, games. Uh, I don't know how it's in, uh, in most of the countries, but in Estonia, if you say someone that please kill yourself, then it's not, it doesn't break any laws. Of course, it's really wrong, uh, wrongful behavior. And of course, the police will uh, take care of it, that the youth workers will talk about it, the school will uh, uh, talk about it. 
but uh, yes, no, sadly, or yeah, it's not it's not in our law anymore. It used to be uh, several years ago. Uh, yes, so I, I hope you can just try uh, the uh, Kahoot. I tried to just make it more funny uh, and to just bring you to the topic. And if someone has questions, meanwhile, I can still answer. Yeah, now is the time where you can also unmute your mic if you have a question. Maria, can I have a question? I see that no one is uh, asking, so I will take this opportunity. Um, if you will think about um, uh, the cases where uh, young people are even in danger, um, we've sp spoken about that, that they often don't inform adults, uh, parents or teachers or youth workers, why do you think uh, is this? Uh, you know, there is a trust for police. So people actually in Estonia dare to turn to police. The same goes for Finland, I guess, and many other Nordic countries at least. But does this mean that uh, kids don't trust their parents or, or is, the, is it fear? Or what kind of um, mistakes do we do that we drive kids away when they need us most? I think the first thing is our background. So I think the uh, violence in the families has not been common, but uh, uh, punishing children physic physically has been in our past. So uh, there are still some families where uh, like parents think that it's okay to just like shake uh, uh, children or, or uh, even hit. So. There are children who are afraid of this kind of punishments. Then uh, there are also problems with uh, trust issues that, uh, you know, when parents only give uh, uh, out the things, they say that, you know, you are, you're not allowed to do this, uh, but they don't uh, add that, you know, whatever happens, you always, you can always call me and I will always help you. If they forget this part, then, that children will always think that, you know, I did something wrong. My parents are ashamed. They are uh, disappointed in, in me. And uh, it's, uh, it's one reason why they don't ask for help. And uh, yeah, uh, there is always the shame uh, because uh, a lot of uh, bullying cases, they, they start so that uh, maybe even the child was one who was initiating this, uh, this discussion or was also uh, saying um, uh, bad words or um, playing with other people's feelings. And so they, they don't want to admit to themselves that uh, they, they also did something wrong and they just hope it will pass. But yeah, uh, that's why we, we put a lot of effort uh, into the like web constable or internet police work. So we go to schools a lot. So if, if a child has seen me and let, let's say I, I gave a lesson to them or something like that, then uh, then they are more willing to talk to me and they, they like to do it through uh, internet or through social media. So the face-to-face -face contact is good. They won't usually talk about things to me uh, in, in the classrooms, but they will write me later on. Um, it seems that the Kahoot is not uh, working. It okay. is, uh, so it's not open. 
Okay, so, so it's... Uh, what I can propose yeah. is that we continue with the next topic and we will leave the Kahoot maybe open for a bit longer, so yeah. everybody can fill it up uh, uh, after or in the end of the webinar, for example. As it was uh, meant for you, for you more like an entertainment than like a serious topic, then I think it's, uh, it's also okay if we send you the link later and you can try it uh, later on. Uh, so, there's the last slide, yes, there's the no. mm -hmm. yeah. Ah, stop sharing. Mm -hmm. And can I see? Okay. So, uh, Melika also told me before I put down the topics what I will discuss that uh, I, I should uh, speak about uh, some solutions, uh, how we can um, solve or prevent or take care of the uh, different pooling cases or take care of the uh, situations so that they don't uh, became, become uh, crimes. So one of my favorite suggestions is that uh, do practical trainings. So in, in Tartu, uh, where I work basically, uh, we have a social skills Olympics, which means that uh, from every school, there are fourth graders in teams, uh, in small teams, uh, and uh, they will come to one place. And for one day, they will have like Olympics of social skills, which is really cool because they have to uh, try different teamwork things. They have to do forum theater. They have to make a lot of decisions. They have to work together. Uh, they have to, let's say, uh, they have to um, put their feelings in the in words, which is like a really necessary uh, ability or. Uh, uh, it's important to have this kind of skill and for the for the fifth year already uh, I have been in one uh, uh, work workshop or like the group work where they come and they, and it's cyberbullying so children are behind another computer and uh, I will be the one who is cyberbullying them which is they don't know that it's a police officer. I mean, in another room, and uh, they just know that uh, they have to, uh, they have to solve the cyberbullying case so that it ends completely. And uh, when I, we started, it was actually really difficult because most of the teams, they were pulling me back. So it's 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 not a good solution if you want to solve a case where somebody is pulling you. And uh, even with the teachers, uh, we, we also had teams of teachers who, who I was pulling and uh, even they had actually no idea how to deal with um, mean, uh, mean insults or how to take care of uh, uh, bullying. So year after year, the answers and the children have, uh, are becoming better. And this year, in January, I'm kind of uh, already afraid that uh, I don't know how to bully them so that they actually uh, feel that I won. So basically, already, like uh, last time when I was uh, uh, doing the cyberbullying, work, all said all the, all the right things, like, please stop it, it's not okay, I, uh, I feel... Uh, so sad that you uh, talk things about me in this way. And uh, they said so many things, what they will do if I don't stop. So let's say they said, you know, I will, I will tell my parents, I will uh, report uh, to the uh, internet police officers. I will uh, make screenshots of this um, uh, chat and I will pass it on to, my, uh, to our teacher if I was uh, pretending to be a student in their class. So, so the training is important, and uh, when cyberbullying happens in real life, they have already seen some kind of solutions, and they have seen how how it works. So that's why I think it's really important, and it doesn't have to be done by by police officer. You can just have it in a youth center. You can you can make a safe environment so that everyone can like talk about those things. 
and reflect and uh, and uh, yeah so it, it is uh, important and uh, one thing that i learned about uh, the social skills olympics is that um, it's never a good idea to uh, take the internet or social media away from from the children so if you try to protect the children so that you don't let them learn then uh, happens what happened last time uh, like I, I i i don't like to bully people but i made the boy cry because he wouldn't he couldn't understand that behind the screen there can be a person who is mean so so just taking away the devices is not a solution and uh, just a remark uh, from that psychologist's uh, view also taking away internet or social media or the access to social media from a child is never a, a good um, solution and sadly in, in estonia we also have seen uh, one uh, suicide uh, a child killed himself uh, because mother used uh, this as a punishment so it was uh, of course the suicide cases are never like black and white but uh, but uh, it's you can't cut people out from their social circle and uh, from the normality what they have built. Uh, yeah, uh, so that's about social skills. Uh, then uh, in Estonia we also have board games. Uh, you can also build uh, those uh, yourself, but it usually has like a bully bully card, you have bystanders card, you have victim card, you have the uh, teacher's card, and etc. So you can play roles. Uh, and you oh, please mute your microphone. It's always um, good uh, to have, have it. So with it, this game was done by one of our like telecom uh, uh, companies and it was really popular so they had to actually print the cards more and the uh, schools are using those um, a lot so people uh, children want to try different roles and uh, they they can also then see that the other side so if they are bullied or if they are the bully or what ha happens when they only when they are bystanders and they don't step in that's why also forum theater uh, is always good as a uh, skill learning base, so you can take roles and solve the situations. Uh, and also, uh, in most of Estonian schools, we have anti-bullying um, uh, like programs, uh, but uh, this also means that they talk about cyberbullying. So, so it will be covered and. Uh, children will have their tools how to fight uh, that bullying. Uh, what I like the most is uh, when you can build uh, the trust between parents and children through the youth work. So whatever event you can do in, in your youth center, uh, what is connecting uh, the parents with the children, then uh, uh, it's the best. So is it a like a team night, or is, is it something that children can do to their parents? Mm, it's uh, uh, useful. And we have to like break the, the myth that our parents uh, don't know the social media sites and they don't know how to behave because uh, with the social media, it doesn't matter what kind of site you're using. Uh, the only, mm, what, what matters is actually uh, that you have the skills uh, to uh, use it, not like digital skills, but social skills. So every social media platform, uh, you must have good social skills and that's what we have to learn. And that, that if the parent is supporting these kind of learnings and, uh, and uh, the children know that they can help, uh, ask for help in social situations from the parents, so, it, it's it's important. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, I can bring out also to um, like um, movies, uh, which when we talk about like 
digital world, uh, you can always use different kind of movies, like, like The Great Hack, or um, it's good if you can uh, watch in youth centers the 13, 13 Reasons Why. Uh, when I talked about this movie in, or the serial in, in Estonia, then most of the social workers and youth workers said, no, 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 our children are not watching it because um, no one has told us about it. And after my le lecture to the social workers, I went uh, to my work and I got letters from the social workers who said, oh my God, you know, my, my own child has actually seen this uh, series several times. And if you don't know the, the 13 reasons why, it's a, so like a, it's a series about the suicide and how, it, uh, uh, how the girl um, is why he decided she decided to kill herself so it's not the movie or series that a child should watch alone so um, it's always a good idea to uh, see what kind of movies are popular and discuss those topics do we have questions like mm -hmm. So one question is um, from Andrei, and uh, the question is about the mandatory reporting laws and practice in Estonia. Uh, first of all, can a minor contact the police or someone for support anonymously? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, so whenever you use a fake account uh, in Facebook or uh, when you send us uh, an email, you can always send us emails with like random uh, letters, which is like, uh, we can't identify who is this person, we still will give you advice because the, our idea is that we will guide people if they need help. And uh, of course, um, when you want to make a, like a real report, I don't know, so something was stolen from you, then uh, uh, yes, it's usually better if you're under 14 that your parent is doing it but it's not uh, illegal for you to uh, report it. Uh, we will just contact the parent uh, anyway. So that's why it's easier to start with the parent. But sometimes it's not possible because um, the crimes uh, are done by parents. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think we can continue now and uh -huh. come back. Okay, uh, so my last topic would be, uh, and was also suggested that uh, I should talk about the future because it's um, gonna be interesting. Uh, right now, I think most of the youth workers already know that uh, the children are moving away from Facebook. So when I started as a uh, internet, internet police officer, it was easy. I just clicked on a child's uh, account and I saw their interests, friends, posts, uh, sometimes even like um, uh, when a child was run, when a child ran away from home, they posted their like new phone number or their address where they ran. So it was for me as you police officer, it was easy to um, contact and find them and uh, it doesn't work like that anymore. So, so people are using uh, more closed uh, apps uh, or closed uh, um, groups and uh, children don't make uh, public accounts. So I think the only thing what we can do for the future is that we still keep um, building the trust that whatever happens in that closed group, you still have backup. So you, you have your parents from whom you can ask for help. You have the police to whom you can always report if something is happening. Uh, the only thing is that uh, we can't be there. We, we can't like support them. Like right now, I mean, um, I mean, uh, very many groups or pages uh, where people have invited me just so that uh, the conversations uh, would stay polite and uh, no one is threatening, threatening anyone. So, I mean, several like foreigners groups and expat groups and uh, uh, 
groups where children talk about bullying and I'm there uh, so I can like just uh, get involved in the discussions or explain the law or I'm in many groups where people tend to pray post uh, stuff uh, like where they cut themselves or where they smoke when they are underage or where they do all the stupid challenges like, um, I don't know, uh, jumping uh, down from uh, uh, high buildings or uh, like I had a case where somebody put his uh, um, jacket on fire because uh, he wanted to collect likes. So it's it's important to be in those places and to uh, see uh, how I can help. Because in Facebook, at least right now, this works that you know when you see something really bad happening, you can always uh, tag my name or you can tag other web constables or you, you can even tag the police pages and uh, we will get the information and, uh, and we will help. The new, new way for us is also that uh, we will have like web constables or like internet police uh, mm, people in the uh, emergency services also because uh, we always say that uh, whenever you see something that is really wrong in, in social media someone is hurting himself or uh, somebody like last week or, or two weeks ago we had somebody was like stabbing someone so you call uh, 112 and uh, during that time, also the person who is responsible for social media will already download the video and will take the screenshots because uh, this is one of the uh, bad things about social media that things tend to get lost, get, they will be deleted, like people delete uh, information and uh, then it's important or crucial to get the information and the data as far as possible. So since December or January, we will actually get uh, special people in our em emergency services only for social media uh, worries. Yes. Yes, and yeah, uh, I think that's, yeah. And of course uh, we will, like I said, the, the police must be where the people are. That also uh, goes to you. You workers must be where the children are. So when you see that they are moving away to another platform, you just have to figure out how to use it and find a way to participate over there also. So that's the only suggestion. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, uh, there's, yeah, there's a few questions. So uh, coming from the first one that I asked you before, there's a second part as well. If a minor contacts the police for support and discloses their identity um, and they are disclosing a reportable offence, is the police ob obliged to follow that up with a, a, or can the minor request the police not to follow it, follow it up? Because it happens that the paid up on my name is I will just yeah. So it's like anonymously yeah, reported. Yeah. So my goal is always to influence the child to uh, to say the name. If I see that, uh, especially when we talk about uh, sexual crimes, when we talk about uh, sextortion, when we talk about uh, things where I know that this child is still in danger, uh, I will speak to them uh, sometimes for several days and I will try to influence them to say the name. And if uh, I know that that child is in danger and uh, let's say she or he will uh, break the contact, then uh, according to the law, we do have uh, the right to take the steps to uh, find the location of the child and uh, to interrupt. But my first goal would be that that uh, she would do it uh, voluntarily so so i will try to influence uh, them to not to stay anonymous if it's if there is a stain danger but uh, there are several cases where children ask for help but they say you know i have a friend and the friend has this kind of this kind of story or uh, they my friend 
um, someone is pooling with friend. And in 99% of cases, uh, this actually is himself who is, is bullied. So, so I usually contact the child uh, anyways. So. Thank you. There's another question. And everybody, if you feel that you would still want to get more clarification, then just write in chat. And if we cannot answer now, then we will send it together with a final report. We will look into those questions again and give you a good overview. Uh, there's a question from Becca. How does the issue of cyberbullying differ country to country? And what good practice, uh, practices have you heard about in other countries across Europe? Uh, <clears throat> Uh, we do have uh, a common uh, cyber uh, cyber law, uh, the Budapest Convention. So we do have like some basic rules we all uh, try to follow, but um, it does differ. Uh, it depends, uh, like uh, the, the the problems uh, differ, because uh, let's say in Sweden you probably have more immigration issues and you have more um, hate speech and uh, cases like that and uh, ex exclusion so that you will be thrown out from the groups because of the skin color or uh, something like that. It doesn't happen that much in, in Estonia because we are this uh, small and we don't have that many, uh, that much diversity. Um, but yeah, about the good practices, um, I have heard from Portugal and from Spain. So, uh, so they do have many actions that that they go to schools and usually it's not the police but it's uh, a youth work work so you will find those projects from the youth work uh, online platform I, I can send you the link later on but this uh, page uh, combines or, or collects all the best practices so how youth workers or just young people can go to schools and help children um, uh, to 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 like to put the um, uh, how can I say uh, so that they are more willing to uh, report the crimes and uh, stuff that have, have, has happened to them. So and I know that in social media the Finns are doing a really great job because we stole the internet police uh, idea from them. So so actually we are. Uh, kind of copycats, but uh, they do it a bit differently. So uh, usually it's like half of the day the police officer is patrolling and the other uh, half of the day he or she is online and answering to the local people questions, which is, in my opinion, really good solution. But for Estonia, I think it's okay to have three web constables because we are so small. Uh, okay, thank you. There's another question from Anna, uh, do you process cases in the presence of parents if the person who has been harassed is a minor or is it not required? It depends. Uh, so uh, we, we can talk to the uh, children without the parents, but we have to, then we have to like uh, say the reason why we can't have the parent here. So in many cases, uh, parents are like, um, uh, so emotional and it's hard for them to uh, stop talking like uh, they will interrupt our uh, investigation or our uh, like when we are just talking to the child so so we always try to explain to the parents that uh, that uh, we will collect one part of the uh, information alone and uh, and then uh, they can, if, if they're calm and uh, they won't say any words, uh, sometimes they can be in the same room, but I personally don't prefer it because uh, the children are open up uh, better if uh, the parent is not uh, there because they do have then other worries. They don't want the parents here, some things. So, so we have to also talk to the parents and say that, you know, we won't uh, abuse your child in, in any ways. We will just listen and try to collect the evidences. Um, there's a question from Alexandra. Uh, how do you recognize uh, how to recognize the cases of youth worker? 
or someone uh, who is working on a daily basis with youngsters in a country where youngsters are not speaking, not even to a friend or family member, let alone with the police, what suggestions you propose as the initiative? Whenever they are changing the use, how they use their phone, so even though they are not talking to you, they are use, using their phones. Uh, I have seen case, cases where children like refuse to use their phones, so they, they like, you can see their shoulders moving when they see that there's a message in, in their phone. So, so it can mean that maybe she's pulling it. Or if they um, use it like too much, this can actually also mean that they are bullied because they want to like, um, at least in, in other ways, they want to live out their thoughts. And, uh, and uh, one way is to overuse the social media. So when you know as a youth worker this child and you see that um, the use of phone or the use of social media has changed then uh, it's a good idea to ask why okay and uh, thank you and there is one uh, bit uh, let's say longer question or takes a bit more to think about it uh, a question from mari i wonder what is the future of tackling cyberbullying what future needs this area has and what resources? Do we have enough capacity in tackling the issue and what is needed? What about the role of volunteering in tackling cyberbullying? Is there any training provided to volunteers? And uh, how many youth workers are trained by the police in cyber safety skills? So is there a question in one, but we can go one by one. Yes. Future. As I said, the future will be more complicated because we will have close, close communities, we will have closed apps and uh, probably the children will use the echo chamber chambers and places where they are, so uh, it's, it will be harder to help them, but uh, using the volunteers is always a good idea, so, so uh, we do have some websites where we have volunteers and, uh, and if they ask for trainings, well, we are always ready to give them uh, different cyber safety skills uh, trainings. And we do have uh, trainers in the, uh, like, I think it was like 100 trainers who can give uh, lessons about cyber safety. So there was a project in Estonia where, where we were training a lot of people to uh, pass on trainings about cyber safety. So, so we have actually spread the knowledge. But uh, the thing about the projects is that you know the project they start and the, then they end, and then no one is using the people anymore. So, it's a good idea to um, maybe refresh the project and uh, take those hundred people back to the to to our site and uh, start. Uh, learning those kind of skills, uh, teaching those kind of cyber skills to students again. But yeah, we, I think uh, we have the like really good page, Targat uh, Targat Internetis, which is like a page in Estonian language, but there are so many cyber uh, tasks what you can um, like solve uh, that uh, it's really useful. So if you are bored as a youngster and want to try some uh, yeah, digital skills or even social skills then you can go to the target internet this um, uh, project it's the safer internet which is also spread in many uh, other european countries and uh, uh, they have similar uh, like similar pages but i think ours has a lot of more like uh, this uh, solving uh, like digital puzzles uh, side, which is really interesting and hard. Thank you, Maria. Uh, we have four minutes until the end of this webinar. Um, Maria, is there anything else that you would like to bring to the table? Yes, <laughs> like uh, 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 in, in, in your countries, you, you also have like uh, you police officers and uh, please contact them because uh, it's always 
good when like youth workers and police workers and social workers uh, and schools and parents work together because uh, we are there to help the children so so the police should never be just like a punish punishing part of uh, our society uh, we are there for the people and uh, if we keep that mindset in our heads then uh, we will have the world's best uh, police and safe world anyway. <laughs>